very good. Uh, we are in uh, on Parashat uh, Vaishlach. Now the word, the word Vaishlach, when we talk about Vaishlach, uh, it's relating to the word sending. Yaakov, if you remember, if you follow the story, it's a very beautiful story. Yaakov is basically sending angels or messengers, because Malach means angels, but Malach can be also Shaliach, meaning a messenger. Sending messenger to the enemy, to Esav, which is a question we need to raise tonight, is why would you bother with your enemy? You are away from your enemy for more than 20 years. Why would you call him? Why would you wake him up? Why would you even tell him I'm here and uh, I need to see you? He was his brother, but it was his brother who wanted to kill him. Everybody knows Esav wanted to kill him. It was known. Once I, I meet my brother, I'm going to kill him. Question we have to raise, and please keep it in, in, the, in the back of your brain, why would we do such a thing? And that's why I dedicate this week for confrontation. It's a week of confrontation. It's a week of, uh, you know, going um, uh, for it, or whatever it looked like. We're going to go for it, because sometimes in life it's better not to do anything, and sometimes in life uh, you have to confront, because if you're not confronting anything, you're dealing with your fear. You know, they ask... Uh, uh, they went around and they asked 50 most successful people in the world in the last 20 years, um, you know, is the reason you become successful is because you're not afraid? And they say, no, the reason we become successful is because we are afraid. And they say, what do you mean? They say, most people who not become successful is because they're afraid to lose what they have now. We become successful because we're afraid that we're not going to achieve what we might have later. I hope everybody got that. So in life, confrontation is a time for you really to discover your full potential, to discover who you are. Most people, unfortunately, it's very sad to say, and, and, and we need everybody. I mean, it's, it's, it, not everybody can be a leader. We need a follower as well. Everybody is needed part of, to be part of the picture. Jacob looked to be in the Torah, in the Bible. I mean, one of the greatest leaders ever live, ever live. So he's sending... To meet his enemy, we're going to read in the Zohar why in a second. And tell them, listen, I live with this man named Lavan. Lavan was a guy who used a witchcraft. And uh, it's, it's, uh, I made it, I survived. And the story continues. It says, the angel came back and tell him, hey, listen, your brother is coming toward you with 400 people with him. Pretty scary news. What kind of angel? I'm sending the angel to come up with that news. So it's a Vaira Yaakov Me'od. Yaakov gets scared. He gets scared and he starts talking to his people, his children, for a wife, and he starts to praying to God. And say, God, I'm a, I'm a small guy and I'm a little guy compared to what all the great things you did to me. You did to me so many good things. And if you look at the commentary, the reason he was crying to God, because he was worried, because he looked at his life, and he started looking at his life and say, I think my life was good. So when your life going so good, usually it's, it's on your, you're being taken away part of your protection. If everything in your life is going perfect, that's when you're using the battery for, for, of safety. You have to always, when you have issues and things are not working as you wish, it's not so bad for you. That's when you're not overusing your battery. So that battery, you want to keep it. You don't want to take from that battery. That's a safe account. It's a safe account for your life. So that's why he was worried. So I'm, my life is perfect. Perfect kids, perfect relationship, all the money in the world. I have everything. Maybe I was overusing the battery, and now I'm going to meet my enemy. <laughs> Start praying to God. Say, God, listen, what you gave me, I know I don't deserve it. I know it was a gift. So I don't want for what you gave me to go ahead and overuse it. And then he say, save me for my brother, for my brother Esau. He said, first save me for my brother, and then he said, my brother Esau. He said, no, my brother, everybody knows his name. So Rashi said, because he, didn't, he doesn't treat me like a brother. Brothers are supposed to treat each other nice. Even we never met two brothers who actually get along. Impossible. Since the time of Rome, you know, if you go to Rome, you're always going to see in Rome there is that I forget the name of the place, but there is like a place where it should be two, uh, 
It's in Rome, in the, the antique place, 2,000 years ago, whatever you call it. So it's supposed to be two rulers. There is one ruler because one brother killed his brother. Do you know the story? Or I'm talking to myself. Or, you know what I'm talking about? History channel something. Okay. Anyway, so after he prayed to God, he fell asleep. He fell asleep and he prepared for war because he knew it's not going to be easy. And as they prepare for war, uh, he, he, he tell them to cross that a little river named Yabok, which Yabok is a code word of the spiritual and the physical. And he let everybody cross. And then he meet an angel to try to kill him. And he and the angel start fighting physical fight. Physical fight. The angel couldn't make it against him. So the angel hit him on, on his thigh. And the commentary said the sciatica, the sciatic nerve. All right? And he said, the angel said, listen, it's morning, and I'm in charge of the morning pray with God. Can you let me go? The angel kind of, it's a funny conversation. He said, no, I'm not letting you go, Jacob said, until you tell me what's your name. What's your name? This is an argument. What's your name? Tell me what's your name, and then I don't let you go. When the, I look at all over the commentary, and most of them say that he asked for his name because they become friends. They become friends. So before you go, you know, when a guy meets a girl or something, he asks for the number, but he asks for the name first, right? And what's your name? So before I let you go, what's your name? So it's a nice thing to do because he asks him for the name. And, and he gave him the name Israel. The word Israel was not given before, it was Jacob. He gave him the name Kisarita Melokim. Sarita means you fight with God. Many commentaries say that this angel was Michael, the angel Michael, that at that point was against Jacob. When he wrestled with Jacob, he turned to become the best friend of Jacob. Yes? <laughs> I love it. We have a reality show. People knock on the door. So he blessed him. He blessed him. And as the story con continue, as the story continue, the, the real confrontation, the real things taking a place now. What exactly happened? And this is like a unique section which is very, truly very difficult to understand. It's written like that. So what it's written there, that the meeting now, Esau, the killer, meeting Jacob, it's an issue now, the killer, Jacob. What is Jacob is doing? Weird thing. He starts bowing to his enemy. He's bowing to Esav seven times. Seven times he's bowing to Esau. Why would you bow to your enemy? Why would you bow to your killer? And then he, he ran. Esau ran to him. No, you have to know. Try to imagine. Nobody knows what's going to happen. That's the killer. That's the victim. He just, the victim just bowed to the killer. They meet each other. And then, almost like a Turkish drama, telenovela kind of a thing. Okay? Like you don't know what's going to happen. They hug each other and they kiss. What is happening here? This story, it's a weird story. When you go in the commentary, it say, look what Rashi said. Vayishakehu. Shakeu many kiss him. There is, those of you who never look at inside the Torah, on the scroll, there is six dot on the word Vaishakeu when he kiss him. So that six dot, Nakud alav, Vyesh Kolkim Badavaraze. And it says, Amar Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai. Say Rashi, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai say like this. Rashi actually use Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Alacha yadua she saf sonele Yaakov. It's Alacha, it's the law. The law is Esau will age Jacob forever. Sometimes you have enemy that's going to hate you forever. What are you going to do? You're going to bow to him seven times? What are you going to do? Ela shenichmeru rachamav v'oto shahav v'nishko bekolibo. But he was able to convert his enemy into his lover and he forced the enemy to kiss him. Question, I'm sure all of you are sitting here and ask. <laughs> me, me too, how do I turn my enemy into a lover. Most of us don't turn that. We make them worse 
then they are. Unfortunately, we fight. A lawyer, we, we are in the city of I will sue you, right? I will sue you.com. This is the place. We want to sue them. They're going to sue us. And I'm going to sue them twice. They're going to sue them. That's, that's, that's uh, life. Jacob, genius Jacob, turned his enemy to hug him and kiss him. Now, what do we do? How do we get there? So keep this second question that we need to answer tonight. Somebody's writing it down because I might forget. There's so much material to cover. So challenge me. Don't let, let me go with, without that. All right? And then, of course, they talk to each other. There is a conversation before I'm going into the Zohar. And uh, now Jacob and Esau are friends. Does Jacob really love Esau? No. He does. What do you do? How do you get rid <laughs> of your enemy? You just make peace with you know, he's not going to kill you for sure now, but you don't want to marry him. You know, uh, um, yes, uh, thank you for not killing, but it, it doesn't mean uh, from now on, because you don't kill me, I want to sleep in the same bed with you. I just want to... Mm -hmm. What do we do? Jacob, just look at Jacob. The beautiful, the smart, intelligent, gentle. And it's like that. Vayomer elav, Adoni yodea ke eladim brakim. He said, listen, the sheep, the cow, the goat, they have issues, and the baby are still young. You know, say, so you are my older brother. You, you go first. You, you go ahead first. Take everything you need. Take, go. I'm a little bit slower than you. I don't think I can do what you can do. You go ahead. Commentaries say there's a code here. And the code, everybody wants a good start. But a lot of people don't have a good ending. And Jacob is teaching us a lesson. You better have a good ending than a good start. Everybody loves, you know, startup, right? Everybody loves startup. The word startup. Startup! Yeah! Yeah! Did you check the percent? How many startups make it? Startup! What the percent? Very low. Startup! Startup is a great idea because it's a startup. Everybody can excited. Startup. Oh, I'm in. What do you do for a living? I'm a startup. Yeah, I'm a manager of the startup. I'm a CEO of the startup. I am the startup. Okay? But the problem is, what about where is it going? So for two years to three years, it's a startup. After three years, those of you who look in investment, you should look in Google. You're going to see crash. Startup and crash. Sometimes four years. If you're lucky, it's four years, so you, you, you be aware. Sometimes it's longer. The startup can last for 10 years. In the 11 years, your own money is gone. So I'm not saying don't do startup. I'm sorry if I come across like that. But Jacob is teaching us something. The end is more powerful than the beginning. Most of us are very excited about the beginning. You know, you know when, I, when I do wedding for people, and I just did wedding in, the, in Israel when I was there. So you see the couple are happy in this and that. And the food, that, 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 that. Oh, and fish. And the, when the bride and the groom choose the thing, no, don't do this, do that, or the fish. I don't like salmon. Oh, very nice, you know, the vegetables. I'm vegan, I'm dead. And I usually take them to a room alone, no parents, no, nobody bother. Say, so you guys, I want to tell you before we're talking about wedding. Uh, it doesn't matter how beautiful would be the wedding. I mean, me personally, I always tell couples, Try not to spend that much money on the wedding. Keep it for vacation, year or two after when the marriage is good. You know, I always tell them to the first year stuff. And I said, it's not how much you love each other when things are amazing and, you know, when she cook or you cook and it's not burning. Every, when nothing works, now come the real deal. So you want the marriage to be not just in the night of the wedding to be amazing. Night of the wedding, it's just you paying money. To impress people, people get impressed, you impress them, everybody go home. Good food, good flour, da 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 da. Shalom. But once you're getting into the real life, then the hafla, you know, then the real things begin. After one year, two years, it begin. So that's what Yaakov said. Lech lefanai, go, go ahead, win whatever you want to win. Last thing before we're going into the Zohar and answering some questions. There is a story, a tough story. Nobody like, no rabbi like to talk about this story. It's unpleasant to the ear. 
We like to skip it, but we need to talk about it. Leah has a daughter. Her name is Dina. Dina, you know, tried to grow up with 11 brother. Not easy. Dina went in a place called Shechem Nablus, one of the most dangerous places in Israel. And the guy liked her. The commentary says she was raped. Uh, but then he fell in love with her. So it's a weird thing. So it cannot be under the Me Too campaign, okay? Because she actually want to be with a raper. You know, so we have an issue with that section. I mean, those of you who read it should read it in English and you will see how difficult it is to even understand what's going on. And that's why most teachers skip that part because what do we do with that? How do you, what happened here? Okay? You want to marry her. So her two brother heard about the story. Her name is Shimon and Levi. And Jacob also heard about it. And I wanted to show you Jacob's style. Yaakov shama ki tibe edina bito banav. Yaakov shama ki tibe edina bito. Ubanav ayu et mekleon basadeh vechrish Yaakov ad baum. Yaakov say nothing to him. Echrish mean he was quiet about it. Not even one word about what just happened to his daughter. Tough. The children of Jacob came from the field, or farmer. They become very angry. They become so angry. So, they come into the house again to ask to have the daughter of Jacob to be married to them. So, Shimon and Levi play a game with them. Say, listen, we have a deal, she will marry you. But everybody has to circumcise themselves because we are Israelite. It was not Jewish then, it was just the Hebrew people. So we are the Hebrew people, the Rashim Ivrayim, you know. Circumcise, you have to circumcise yourself. If all the town is not circumcised, we, she cannot marry you. They did it. As they're doing it, in the third days, Shimon Levi came with a sword, kill every man in Nablus. Shechem, you know what Shechem is? Nablus. One of the most dangerous places in the world. But there is so much conflict there. So much blood, so much killing. They kill everybody. And look what it says. You would think that the father Jacob is happy. It's almost like the Godfather movie, you know? The... the you know, what do you call it? The, 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 the person who sits in the chair, the head guy, the two son coming, say, hey, we killed all people who did it to you. So, good son, good, very good. He kissed the ring. No. Vayomer Yaakov and Shimon and Levi tell them, Achartem oti lavishemi v'yosheva aretz. Say, you make my name and you make my legend a shame. Argument. And by the way, when he's about to die, he doesn't give them a blessing because of that. He doesn't give Shimon a blessing. The portion, as you can see, has two aspects of confrontation. Two aspects of confrontation. Confrontation when you're going for it, and confrontation when you become smart. How are we confront our issues? We all have issues. We have internal issues. Somebody who has addiction has internal issue. Some people who have anger issue, it's an internal issue. If it can come outside of the people, it's an issue. Laziness, it's an issue. How are we confront our true enemy? Internal enemy and external enemy. What do we do about it? What do we actually come up with? How are we acting like Jacob? Because most of the time, if we be honest with ourselves, we're acting like Shimon and Levi. We are super reactive. We want to kill our enemy. Jacob didn't try to kill Esau, he bowed to him. Jacob didn't try to kill the one who raped his daughter. He was thinking, he was quiet, and was thinking what to do. How? I mean, what, what's, first, what's the right approach? Is the right approach to go for it because it's terrible, you have a bad name. If you don't do nothing when people are abusing you, you have a bad name. 
if you do something, people abuse you, it's a 50-50. Sometimes you win, sometimes you're not. Seem that the Torah is taking us to a whole new level of understanding of what to do. And Jacob by himself teaching us a behavior change, which doesn't make any sense, by the way, because it's, it seems like almost you inviting abuse. But Jacob doesn't look at it like abuse. He looks at it like, how do I build the own style of legend? We are not building a legend when we behave in a reactive way. We are building a solution for the five minutes. And then one hour later, we are upset again. Why? Because when you get angry, you scream at somebody, you didn't solve anything. You actually, the opposite happened. You are happy for five minutes, and then later on, it's getting worse. So we need to get into the Zohar in verse 15. First, to understand the first question I asked. You remember what was the first question? What was the first question I asked? Who remember? Why did you send messengers? Why would you send a messenger to your killer? Why would you do that? And the Zohar, the Zohar actually go to that in verse 15. So that, Michelle, you want to read it? Please, go ahead. Let's read it. It's on the screen. Verse 15. And Jacob sent messengers. Rabbi Abba said what motivated Jacob to send messengers to Esau? Would it not have been better to refrain from sending any to him? He answers. Jacob said, I know that Esau reversed the father's honor. It has never troubled him, as long as I know that my father is alive, so I do not fear Esau. So as long as my father is alive, I wish to appease him. Thus, he immediately has sinned, and Jacob sent messengers before him. Good. I think this is a very simple explanation. Makes sense. Makes sense. Esau, and those of you who never have been in the Machpelah in Hebron, if you go to Isaac grave, next to Isaac grave, there is actually a small grave. That small grave next to Isaac's grave is the head of Esau. Why only the head? That's next week, Parasha. Actually, it might be in this week, Parasha. Yet, only the head. Just the head. There's few graves like this in Israel, by the way. There's one in Sfat. Okay? Just the head. Why he was buried next to Isaac? Because the respect he has for his father was tremendous. Now, Jacob knew that his father would never want him to kill Jacob. So Jacob knew it and said, you know what, if I meet him before my father is dead, it would be a great thing to do it because now he cannot touch me, untouchable. One explanation, of course, one explanation, okay? Let's continue. Let's see what this all continues to say, please. And Jacob sent messengers. Rabbi Shimon began the discussion with the verse, better is one lightly esteemed who owns a servant than one who cranks himself but lacks bread. This, re this verse refers to the evil inclination who constantly abuses man. The evil inclination causes man to become haughty and proud, encouraging man to curl his hair until the evil inclination towers over him and drags him to Genom. Genom, Genom in hell, those of you who don't know Hebrew. Now, we, we have issues here. We need to have issues, we need to raise questions. What is this to do with the section before? The section before, talk about the parasha, talk about the Torah, talk about why Jacob went. All of a sudden, we're talking about totally a different thing. So should I understand from it something new? We are not talking about Jacob and Esau. We talk about me, us, me, Jacob. Esau is my enemy. My enemy is the evil inclination. This is the Yetzirah, and, and I, I, I gave a lecture similar to that on Saturday night, one of the home here. And most people think that they have evil inclination. Most people actually think that they merit to have evil inclination. I said, no, no, you need to know that some people don't even have evil inclination. They're worse than that. And they look at me, what's worse than evil inclination? Say so it's called animal kingdom reflex. Animal kingdom reflex. That when you do the bad, you don't even think about it. It's like an animal. You become an animal, you have to do it. I gotta eat. I gotta scream. I gotta get angry. Why? I don't know. It's not that the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, come and tell you, do it, and you kind of work on that, and you try, and in the end you do it. We're talking about reflex. You cannot even think. You kill, you steal. When a person do negativity enough time, it's no longer evil inclination. It starts to go down step by step by step until the person becomes an animal. It's not a human anymore. 
And that's why next lifetime he has to be reincarnated as an animal. Why? Because why you continue to be a human? Because you're respecting your free will was given to you. And you were able to use the free will in the right way. But once that kingdom of the free will was gone, the next lifetime is an animal. It's a reflex. Why do you scream? I don't know. It's not a choice anymore. That's called animal kingdom. So now, let's go back to the Yetzirah. The evil inclination, it say, is coming to a person when he has ego. What is ego? We know two types of ego, as the Ramchal explained. One ego is when you think you are the best, and one ego when you think you are the worst. So when you think you are the worst, normally you think, oh, I'm so humble, I think I'm the worst. No, 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 that's ego too. Welcome to the club. Ego, worse than the one you think you are the best. If you take a Ferrari convertible, make sure your name is all over the door, okay? People know you are the one who drive it. There is actually TV running after you, cameras and everything, and they're announcing your name. That's a, no, no. And you go on Canon on one of those streets, Rodeo. It drives slowly, the music is loud, <laughs> and there is an announcer in every corner. Here come, ladies and gentlemen. That's ego, right? I mean, that's ego. What if you're walking miserable, poor, no shoes, pants is tear, pieces, no announcer, nobody care about you, begging for food and money, right? Not because you don't have, because you enjoy being miserable. Because by the way, a beggar is not just a physical condition, a beggar is a mental condition. I don't know if you know that. Mm -hmm. You should talk, you know, to psychologists, you should talk to them, and you will see, most of them don't want to climb up. The fear of rejection for them is so severe that they prefer to stay down. For that reason, the only rabbi named Ramchal, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato, from Italy, he was the only one who had the guts to say that the beggar has more ego than a businessman. He was the only rabbi who actually has the guts to say it. And he proved it. He said, well, a businessman go there and get humiliated all day long. A beggar just, the one thing he does, hands out money or food. That's it. That's the work. It's a working. I was today, well, only $60. So the idea of the ego is we need to know when we're busy with ourselves, that's ego. Whatever you say, I'm the worst or I'm the best. I heard one of uh, a gentleman who came to see me, very, very interesting. He said, uh, um, uh, what he told me, uh, he told me, I'm such a terrible person. I'm the worst person ever lived. I don't think there is somebody worse than me in LA. That's what he said. I'm the worst. But for some reason, in the dream, God chose only me. I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at the person. I say, well, we have two ego situations. One, he said, I'm the worst. And then he said, I'm the best. What am I going to do with him? And I look at him, I said to me, so what do you think? I said, I'm not sure I can help you. I have a great psychiatrist, you know, and they can help you very, you know, they can be very good for you. Because you're suffering, there is, there is something that, there is a certain condition that can be cured. But the ego is not because you are special or because you are the worst. Ego is a, is a necessity. You can never get rid of the ego. Those of you who tell you, oh, I, let me teach you how to get rid, there's no such a thing. Whoever promised you this is a liar. Ego is there forever. It's our identity, it's who we are. It can never go away, for sure. It can never go away fully. But we need to check. Hey, how am I doing on that? It's all about me or there is other people involved? It's all about me or there's other people involved? When you're depressed, it's about you. When you are happy and just you, it's about you. Share it with others. Make it about people. Your happiness should be other people, with people. Conversation be the other person. Okay, so I want to continue with the same section, better. Better is one lightly esteemed, means one who does not follow the evil inclination and does not act haughtily, but humbles the spirit hard and will before the Holy One, blessed be he. Then the evil inclination becomes his servant, as it cannot control him. On the contrary, the person who controls it, as it is written, yet you may rule over him. The, the, the point is, how do you humble yourself? How do you humble yourself? So there is, I don't know if you ever heard, heard a concept called active listener. You know what an active listener is? 
somebody when you talk to them and they ask question after you talk to them. Ask question. You know, you talk, they ask question. You talk, they ask question. That's humble people. Why they're humble? They know that they don't know. They know that they don't know. People who don't ask question either think that they know or they're too shy to ask because they think they don't know, but they're too shy. Both reason is ego. Ask question. You want to be humble? You want to be recognized as being humble? Always ask question. I'm giving you antidote against ego. Ask question. I don't know. I don't know. If you're not capable to study from every human being, you're not humble. You want to tell me that nobody can teach you? Nobody can actually add something to your life? It doesn't have to be just wise people. Stupid guys can teach me something. Crazy people can teach me things. Right? You ever been in a mental hospital to visit somebody? I was. I was. Somebody tried to commit suicide four times. So the family called me and said, please come talk to him before we leave. So I'm uh, going there. It was Great Neck, uh, Long Island. So I'm getting there. And I mean, I was fascinated what this guy teach me. Fascinating. And the family looked at me and said, why, why are you listening to him? Come and help him. I said, listen, the guy tell me a story. What did I ask him? What do you think I asked him? He tried to kill himself many times. I said, what did you see? The father and mother look at me, and he's very smart. He's a doctor. He's an MD. So he said to his parents to leave. He said, I want to talk to you alone. And he told me everything that he saw. I was shocked from the, from the picture, the, the vivid, like, how nobody ever explained it like that, but the guy died and come back, you know? He told me, there's three type of people. There is a light in the end of the tunnel, like everybody say, and that light is a joy. Everything that you think is joy in this life, physical life, that's what this light feels like. People don't talk. People talk with their mind, but everybody understands all the language. There's no need for language. We understand each other. It's a feeling talk. Then he told me that. The floor is a white. It's a white cotton. And that cotton, some people get stuck in it and they cannot lift their leg. Some people jump on it and walk a little bit faster. And there is people who are flying above that toward the light. So, of course, we continue. I'm, I'm coming to help a guy instead of it, I'm studying from him. So I told him, why, why there is three kinds? Are you aware? He said, yes, we're very aware. The one who's stuck in the bottom is the one that wants so much to touch the light, but they don't have an engine how to go about it because all their life they were thinking about themselves. So they're stuck in the, in the curtains, but the suffering for them, that the light is the joy, but they cannot reach out to it. The one who jumped is people who did, you know, mediocre. They did, one day was good, one day was bad, and they jumped, but eventually they get to the light, but slowly. And then there is the one who just did sharing and loving and they enjoy life and everything was amazing about them. They just fly toward the light. They just recognize what it is. They don't even know there is a flow. The flow don't even exist for them. I'm telling you, you want to be humble. Everybody can teach you. If you didn't learn a lesson every day, there's a problem. There's the ego there. The ego is not bad because of manners. The ego is bad because you are asking for less. When you have ego, you think you're asking for more, but you're asking for less. When you are humble, you're asking for more. You're asking for more. Remember, humble people want more, not the other way around. You're open for everybody. Everybody can teach you. Everybody. A kid, a baby, everybody can teach you. But when you are have ego, who can teach you? Just you. And you filter out whatever other people teach you to see if it's matched with your lesson and your knowledge. So you got to be careful with that. Now, let's continue with that. I'm sorry I spoke too long on that because we have more stuff to cover. Okay, let's go fast on this one. Come on. 18. Then one who paints himself, as we have we said, that he puts on airs, curls his hair, and acts haughtily, but lacks bread. This means a lack of faith, as it is written, to offer the bread of his Elohim. And the bread of their Elohim they do offer. Bread is the Shekhinah in both verses. Faith is the Shekhinah, so lacking bread means lacking faith. So the whole idea, you know, people asking how to get the faith, how to believe more, humbleness. Humbleness comes from to say, I don't know. The Talmud said, ask once a day, I don't know, but mean it. I don't know. Practice to say, I don't know. 
when you meet people that don't know how to say, I don't know, and I remember I travel many countries in my life, the only country that people don't know how to say, I don't know, was actually in uh, Uruguay and Argentina. It's the only two places in my life when people cannot use that word to say, I don't know. They would rather lie than tell you, I don't know. And I used to confront them. I used to come back with the car. I'm Israeli. I couldn't help myself. Come back. <laughs> what? Why didn't you tell me? Why you tell me left? Why? It took me time to understand. Why couldn't you say, I don't know? Then I would not trust you. Now somebody else. Why you send me to the wrong direction? And this I don't know business is, is the healthiest thing you can do to yourself this week. Let's, let's just finish this section, please. Another, 19. Another please. interpretation of better is one lightly esteemed is that it refers to Jacob, who humbled himself before Esau so that Esau should later <coughs> become his servant. By controlling him, he spilled the meaning of the verse, let peoples serve you and nations bow down to you. It was not yet time for Jacob to rule over Esau. Jacob left to happen at a later time, for he was lowly then. Later, however, the one who cranks himself becomes his servant, and then he will lack bread. This refers to Esau, who will become Jacob's servant, who was given plenty of corn and wine. So, Esau become the servant while you bow to him. Now I'm going to the second question. You bow to your enemy, and he become your servant. Let's, let's understand that. You have, you have issue with somebody. How do you turn somebody who hates you to love you? So we need to go to fundamental understanding of life. Where people have more joy, when they give or when they receive? What do you think? In general, you can think about all people. Don't think only about righteous people. You agree with that? Even the most selfish person has joy they have joy, actually, when they give. They want to, even for their, own, for their own reason, ego. I want to show everybody how big shot I am. That's giving. I'm still doing giving. For the wrong reason, it's still giving. When you are basically lowering yourself, are you, at that moment, forcing the enemy to give? Think deep, okay? Think deep. It's, it's a very important point here. If you can make your enemy save you, would your enemy turn into love you? I, I want you to think. It's, it's kind of, it's not an easy concept. I just want you to think about your life right now in this second. Think about somebody who bothers you the most right now. I hope you don't have any enemy. I, I hope you don't. When you make somebody who don't like you and you are miserable and they are now saving you, they start liking you. I look at your face, then go to put glasses. You're not with me on that. I don't know, are people at home with me? Hello, people at home on Facebook or whatever it is. So talk to me. What do you think? I'm not going to continue. I want to stop here to make sure it's, it's clear because I think it's quite profound. You're allowing them to be a giver. Yeah, I know what I say, but tell me about your life. I want to know about your life. Starts a little bit for me, and I'm sure for lots of other people. Um, when someone is your enemy, actually, is going to enjoy seeing you suffer, right? So you're going to be like miserable. And that's what you think. And so it's not true. Huh. It's, that's that's what we all think. Uh, me too. Until I read it, we all do this mistake. It's very interesting. But I'm going to go into it. But I want to hear for more people about your life. Think about your enemy. If your enemy know that they are now the solution for you. It's called Nechmeru Rachamav. Immediately, they are awakening a mercy. They cannot help it. It's not by choice. They hate themselves, but they have to give you. It's a unique technique. It's a very, try it. Try it. Try it. Try it with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, everybody. Try it. You'll be shocked when you lower yourself. They are actually become first happy that you are below them. And now, without they know why they're doing it, why it's happening to them, they're thinking now how to give you. But they don't think because they want to. It's the nature of the behavior of humanity, human being, spirituality, how God created this world. Talk to me, guys. Talk to me. You don't have to agree with me. Better you don't agree with me and ask, then you leave 
Like you remember that dog we used to have in the car that moved the head like this? And you say yes, 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 and then you forget everything. So it's better to have a conversation if you have a difficult time with that. If you have an enemy, I can help you. Just mention their name and we can talk about it in front of the camera life. <laughs> no name, no name. Me while I'm down, they're already down. There's nothing else. How many story? Maybe in my job I hear a thousand story. So a lot of time I hear a story that the, their enemy went so low and the 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 the, the, the person who was their enemy before all of a sudden send them a gift or send them money without they know. He wouldn't even say it's them taking care of them, just for him to feel, to feel even for the wrong reason, even for the ego. It's, it's kind of deep, but I'm telling you it's a secret of how to turn every problem into a solution. In Kabbalah, it's called mashpia. From a, a receiver, you're becoming, you're becoming from, what, what, why people fight? Two reasons. Either both of them want to receive, or both of them want to give. Beginning of fight, then that's the whole formula of fighting, by the way. You both want to give to each other until somebody gets insulted. You both want to receive. So husband and wife usually fight. He want to give her, she doesn't want it. Right? She want to receive, he doesn't want to give it. Right? He want to buy her that shoes. Even if it costs $500, she doesn't like it. She says, it's not beautiful, I'm sorry, $500. It's very nice, the price, but it's not me. So you give. She doesn't want to receive. Fight. Then she wants something which she thinks is better. So no, 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 no. Fight. So receiving and giving is always the reason for the fight. When the enemy, think about your enemy now. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. You have a, an example of a situation. Um, which one? The, the enemy. Like the, enemy, the, go. Yeah. So the brother and sister, they got a big fight. Exactly. 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 Yes. Oh, tough. <laughs> tough. Exactly. That's very. Oh, you have, have to deal with it. You have to deal with it. I love it. I love that example. Yeah. Where is that mercy you're talking about? Very good, it's very good. Very good example. That brother and sister, let's say brother and sister, the brother didn't love himself enough. He was waiting for the wedding. You know, she was hope that he will do something. I don't know the whole story, but if I go into the details, if he would do, if I would talk to him, I said, lower yourself so bad until the person was begging you. I tried this formula, it's unbelievable how it works. I mean, you can ask Debbie, she was in front of my family, we had issue with my sister. My God, my sister was chasing me. What, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? You know, after she did disaster to me and Debbie, after what was, can I do this, can I do this, can I do this? And Debbie said, what were you? I said, I'm mean, nobody. I was just, the idea, you lower yourself so bad that, try, think about two cups, one pouring, one receiving. If both of them the same level, one cannot pour to the other. But when you lower, they just have to pull the... It's an art, by the way. It's an art, and it has to be done right. It has to be done right. If you want to talk to me in private about your issue, not today, but That's I will show you how easy. Here, so. No, but I will show you how easy it is to do it, but you have to be real crushing your ego. You have to be for real. It's not a joke. You are really become dust. And then, ashpa'a magia, meaning... Uh, uh, nourishment start coming. For that reason, we say, Me'ashpot yarim avyon. We say in the tefillah, that God is, is elevating from the garbage the poor people. Why is it he, he elevate them? Because when you're getting to the worst of the worst, you're going up. You know, one of the, uh, I met a lot of famous speakers, one of the most famous speakers in my life, that I met, and, and uh, with no name, so 
It's funny when he, he give lecture to business people. So he's talking about there is two levels. There is desire and desperation. So when you have a desire to get somewhere, it's nice. But you didn't crush your ego yet. Then there is something called desperation. And he described it. You have a gun to your head and gun to your family's head. And you have 48 hours to eat, you talk about business, to get money that we tell you to get. And you have gun in your hand as well. You will not even know how far you're gonna go. Because you reach the bottom of the bottom, a lot of ideas start to come down. Not just idea from people, from God. That's a bad example for business and for being evil. But what I'm trying to say, the desperation of a human being of crush lower the ego, Invite all the people to like you. Who do you like more? Here, I give you a simple question. Do you like somebody who's egomaniac or somebody who's a nobody? Who do you like more? Yeah. You like the nobody. Why do you like a baby? Did you ever ask yourself? Why do you like a baby? What does the baby do for you? If I ask it, Rav Ashlag asked this question. Baby do zero for you. Zero. Evil little creature who consume time. Rav Ashlag, this is not my word. Who take your time changing the diapers. Doctors, panic attack if he went to the bathroom or he ate or fever. All, the, you, all day long with that. This little thing, all. And what are you getting back? Nothing. You're actually getting nothing. But you ask a mother and father, of course I'm getting, of course, of course, of course. I'm going to buy new clothes and new little shoes like this from fabric. <laughs> I'm so happy, I'm so happy. What did you get? Nothing. I remember the first baby, Debbie and me had, I remember we bought all kinds of things. The worst thing never to buy is the thing for the diapers. There is like thing, it's a sleeve where you put the diapers. It actually never work, never work, don't, don't buy that. It's not the diaper is that big, the thing is that small. You push it, never work. All kind of things that they, for the parents, you know, parents will do anything. So Rav Ashlag asked the question, why? Why you like the baby? I've asked like answer because the baby has nobody to help him. So because he become humble like Yaakov, he become nothing, automatically it brings in you the creator force, the divine force. So you become Bore Olam, you become the Bore, you become the creator, you have to give. Why is the mother has the milk? Why the, the Zohar and the Kabbalah say that the period turn into milk, the blood turn into white? It's magic. This is just magic by itself. How can that be? Because the receiving, blood rep represents receiving, turn into giving. You cannot help it. All of a sudden there's a baby. I have to save this thing. Why? Because once you see, it's automatic, guys. You have to remember. You know why we love the story of Tarzan? There's a miserable little baby hanging there and a gorilla go and save him there. I mean, the story is a little weird, you know? If you think about it, but we love it. We see, oh my God, with the gorilla, oh, Tarzan. We love the story, Tarzan. Oh my God, from Tarzana, right? That's what it was written, I think. No, Tarzana. Am I right? I don't know. Something with Tarzana. Anyway, let's continue. I think the point was clear. I try everything to make sure it's clear. But just last thing before I'm going to another subject. Um, so look what. What it does, this is a little bit of manipulation. You may not like it, but you need to know it too. Come and behold, Jacob knew that he needed him now. Therefore, he appeared as if he was slightly esteemed. By doing so, he showed more wisdom and guile than he had ever shown against Esau. Had Esau been aware of the, this wisdom, he would have killed himself rather than coming to this. However, Jacob did all this with wisdom, and about him, Hannah said, the adversaries of Hashem shall be broken in pieces, and he shall give strength to his king. This is unbelievable. Jacob manipulates his killer to love him. Forget not to kill you, to love you. How many of us took one enemy in this lifetime and turned him into loving us? This is, this is an art. This is Yaakov. He said if Esau only knew what, I, what he did to him, he will, he will kill himself, not him. He will be ashamed. Jacob smoothly become nothing. Say, oh, Esau, what do you think we should do? I mean, by the way, I want to give you that advice. It's a bad advice for, for men, very good advice for women. When women are still dating, always ask the men the question. Make the men up because men want to lash pia. 
And when they said to you, what do you want to eat? Or what do you want to drink? I always say, what do you think is the best? Is this good? If you, I trust your decision. You will see what happened to the menu. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't even look at the menu. Forget the menu. Put it aside. You are with the king now. Oh, my God. Let me tell you. You are. <laughs> <laughs> even if you suffer and the wine is terrible. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know what I'm saying, Rob, right? You know what I'm saying. How is it feel? How is it feel? <laughs> All of a sudden, you are the king. Oh, okay. Finally, somebody recognized my, my, my ability. My ability. What? I don't know, man. You are the... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to go because we have about 15 minutes. So I just want to go to the next section. How do we go about it? Okay, we got it. We need to be humble, lower ourselves, la, 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 la. How did I change it into kosher meat or kosher food? And how does it affect your personality? The idea, this section is about to teach us. Most people think that kosher food is about being religious and all this and that. It's not just that. Whatever you eat affecting your way you behave, the way you think even. Even the way you think, you know, it's like uh, I think one of my friends asked me, don't you think God will forgive you a little bit uh, if you eat a little shrimp, a little lobster or something? Well, I mean, one day, no. so it's not about God forgive me or not. It's about me don't want it because I want to connect in a certain way. So I'm not doing it for God. I'm doing it for me. So let's read about that. I'm going to try to do it as fast as I can because I've, other subject I want to talk to you about. Go ahead, please. Therefore, the children of Israel eat not of the sinew of the vein, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew of the vein. It is forbidden to enjoy it or even give it to a dog. He asks, why is it called the sinew of the vein? Okay, so we know that not even a dog can eat that piece. Do you know what I'm talking about? The, you know what the filet mignon? It's a, it's a you know, filet mignon is a, it, it, in Israel, when they slaughter a cow, the, half, the back of the cow gone away, the front of the cow is what you eat. Some people from North Africa used to know how to take a needle and go through the meat, take, the meat become very expensive, and they take the vein out. You know, they take the vein out and then you're okay to eat it. You heard about stuff like this? Really? My father was a butcher. Oh, your father was sorry, I didn't know. So it's, 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 they don't do it today, really. They don't do it today because then you have to pay $200 for this little piece, so forget about it. So either you eat not kosher, which is filet mignon, that has within it that evil very strong, and we're going to talk about it in a second. Go ahead, please. When the angel wrestled with Jacob, he could not find a weak place in his body through which to overcome Jacob, because the parts of his body were all strong and without weakness, and the klipa takes hold only a place of want and weakness. What did he do then? He touched the hollow of his thigh, the sinew of the vein, his own kind, that is, the evil inclination, which is his own kind. And there is a place of the evil inclination from where it comes to harm people. Continue, please. From that reason, for that reason, the Torah reads, Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew of the vein. The friend said that a man's body parts owe lead to higher places. If the member is good, it draws goodness. If it is evil, it draws evil. Thus, each animal member we eat strengthens the corresponding member of the man who eats it. Assuredly, the sinew of the vein strengthens the evil inclination, which is its own kind, and therefore the children of Israel do not eat it. But the heathen nations may eat it, as they are of the side and kind of the angel. Don't say the name. Don't say the name. Sam. 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 For it strengthens their hearts. Okay. So the idea is like this. New revelation. If you have an issue in any part of the body, they used to do it by Sephardic, a Jew used to do it, by the way. You eat the part of the animal that relates to that uh, part of the body. Okay? Very interesting what exhausted. Another thing, it say that as a person, you know, as an animal, I mean, if you took, take the word Adam, Adam mean human, Behemah mean beast, is the same numerically value. Meaning for us, that, that's why it says, Adam u'behema toshi Hashem, God help animal and human, in the same verse. And we were created in the same day, so it's not a coincidence. So the animal was not supposed to be eaten by human. 
only until Noah. Till Noah, everybody was vegetarians, vegan. After Noah, they start eating animal. Why is that? Because all the people who die in the flood reincarnate into animal. And that's why you had to eat an animal to elevate their soul that's stuck in animal to the next lifetime reincarnation in the human. For that reason, Rabbi has a clue. He never eat meat during the week or chicken or anything like this. He only ate it on Shabbat because it's very difficult to elevate meat uh, or, or sheep or, or, or cow or whatever it is, chicken, during the week. Okay, so he was only on Shabbat because Shabbat elevate whatever you eat to the highest level. But during the week, we don't have enough power to do it. We don't have inside of ourselves enough power. Now, if you eat the negative part of the body of the animal, it's affecting you. And it's take time, take at least a week for that negativity to leave you alone. To leave you alone. I always tell people if you have if you have the capability not to eat meat, well, let it go. You know? Because if let's say the animals suffer when you kill the animal, that suffering stains you too. So it's not not there. So today, thank God we're in California. There is so many vegan red places. There's a lot of sushi places, there is fish, there is everything. But let's talk about the spiritual essence of it. It say that the Israelites should eat it and the non-Israelite. Now, the Zohar was written 2,000 years ago. In those days, it was no Christian, no Muslim, or Hindu, or anything like that. It was people who believe in idol worshiping or people who believe in one God. That's it. It was two kinds of people. It says that if people believe in idol worshiping, it will not affect them. And I hope we, it doesn't matter if you are, what religion you are, you have to believe that there is one. Quantum physics, the whole concept of quantum physics, that it's all one. Everything is interconnected. If you don't believe that everything is interconnected, you believe in other God. We know that Rabbi Akiva and, and uh, all the other three rabbis that went to the highest level, only Rabbi Akiva made it. Why the other three guys didn't make it? Because he said to them, when we're going to go to the highest level, you might see two God. But it's an illusion. It's one God. Because they saw the evil kingdom and the good kingdom. And one of them says, his name is the Acher. Oh, so there is two God. There is God of the evil and God of the good. And Rabbi Akiva, before the enter, he said to him, do not say my mind. Do not say differences. It's one thing. When we are thinking like that, one, then we should eat like that. The food you put into your body affecting your consciousness. And look how it works. Please read it. Man has 248 members in his body corresponding to the two... Women is different. It's 252, okay? So, but it's the same concept. Go ahead. Corresponding to the 248 positive commandments in the Torah and to the 248 angels with whom the Shekinah is clothed, named after their master. Keep going. There are 365 sinews corresponding to 365 prohibitory precepts, and the sinew of the vein is one of them. They correspond to the 365 days of the year, that is, together with the 10 penitentiary days, that the ninth of Av being one of them. It corresponds to the angel S, Sam, which is one of the... The angel Sam, we cannot say his name, is the, the darkest angel is the husband of the woman who tempted Adam in the Garden of Eden, is her husband. So this is considered the most evil forces. Who is one of the 365 angels ruling over the 365 days of the year. The ninth of Av is one of the days of the year, and the sinew of the vein is one of the 365 sinews. Both belong to the same category. Thus, the Torah reads, therefore, the children of Israel eat not of the sinew of the vein. The Particular at the here includes the ninth of Av when it is forbidden to eat and drink, being in the same category as the sinew of the vein. So when you say do not eat the sciatica, the sciatic nerve, the is et. Et is initial of tisha of Av. Tisha means tesha, nine. Av means the month, Av. So it's Aleph and Tav. Very interesting. So it's teaching us something. Your body is building from 365 nerve system. Those nerves, that sciatica, is corresponding to the nine of Av. Every nerve is corresponding to one day of the year. Every time you commit a certain problem, that, ner that day gets affecting the nerve in your body. 
Now, the sciatic nerve, when you eat it from the cow, it's going directly to the area where it's already told you it's belonged to the dark side. You can eat it because you activated that area again. You activate that negative area again. So when people say, I'm trying to change, I'm trying to be spiritual, I pray three times a day, I'm a better person, I forgive my mom. This is psychology, this is good. But you have to practice. Kosher food is not about religion. It's about making your life better. Not about religion. Making your life better. You're thinking better, you're less foggy, you're clear, you know where it's going. Of course you have to check, I mean, I don't know if the slaughter was Jewish, did it kosher or not, I don't know. I can't tell you that. But at least you try to do the best, let's put it this way. Because you might, you might buy a kosher meat, but it's actually not. It happened. Unlucky. So, I'm not telling you the, the best kosher food is to do what I did this year in Rabbi Shimon, when they slaughtered in front of me the, the animal, which was not pleasant to the eyes. Unfortunately, I was there, but that's... Moroccan family, very famous. You know, we did like, that was all kind of sheep and shochet and dancing and, <laughs> and blood. Okay? Okay? But kosher. <laughs> so kosher not always look pleasant. Okay? I want to make sure it's clear. So again, the food you're eating, the food that you're eating affecting you, not from a healthy point of view, not from a mentally point of view. We are talking about rules that was written thousands of years ago, and they tell you, Gid Anashe, no. So when the Torah telling you don't eat this, it's not because of health reason. Not because of health reason. I want to make sure it's clear. Eating kosher will not keep the cholesterol low. Eating kosher is only for the sake of your soul, connect to your, it's called conscious mind, in a better way. She will be more aware of things around you. It's not because of any other reason. So if you are expecting because you're eating kosher to be healthy, forget about it. Nothing to do with health. But if you're expecting your soul to be activated in a better way, yes. Yes. And I know a lot of people now, it's become fashionable to eat kosher food in a non-kosher restaurant. And people ask me if it's okay. And I say, it's okay if you know what you're doing. It's okay if you know what you're doing. So people say, I'm going to sushi restaurant. That's okay to be not kosher because the knife is cold. You know, no big deal. So if you already go to those places and you don't know what you're doing, you're for sure going to do a mistake because there's a thousand rules about what's the right thing and what's the wrong thing. Okay, so I'm not trying to make you more fanatic or more religious, but I'm trying just to make you think about it from a spiritual point of view. Okay, from a spiritual point of view, what are you putting into your mouth affecting your brain? Three days minimum, okay? Seven to eight days maximum. Affecting you. Affecting your mind, your thought, your, your everything. And you, if you think you want to work at the ego, but you eat whatever you want, forget about it. The ego connects to what you eat too. That's why I put it there. Because people are thinking, ah, no big deal. What is this? Kashir. Nonsense. No, it's, it's very serious. It's very serious. It's what shape your personality. What shape, humbleness or ego? So is that mean that everybody who eat kosher have no ego? You should challenge me with that. I know many people who eat kosher are so full of themselves. There's only ego there. Ego, kosher ego actually. It's a kosher ego. The meat should be called from now on kosher ego. So the idea, I, will, I like to answer that by saying, can you imagine if they wouldn't eat kosher, how bad they would be? They would be killer, you know? Because this need to affect us. And I know it takes time to look into every bag you're eating, blah, 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 that, that. You want to buy a lettuce. To buy a lettuce today, it's a headache. It can never be kosher lettuce. Until we found, thank God, we found it. There been me a certain bag that it's already washed and kosher and all this. Oh, we're celebrating. Roman lettuce. You cannot. You can't. Roman lettuce to, to do, make it kosher, impossible. Impossible. The worm are swimming there. I can show you all the light. You will be shocked what, what's going on. Fish, oh, not a disaster if it's not kosher. Meat, oh, another problem. It's non-stop. But people think, okay, look at all of you get excited. Oh, okay, for clean, yeah, I, I think I'm eating kosher. If it's clean, I'm in, I'm in. But for spirituality, I, I look at your face, that's why I put the glasses. I say, now let me sell it kosher 
to the health reason. Now everybody, yes, I'm, I'm into it. But can I sell you the kosher point of view from a spiritual point of view? Forget health. Think that you will be happier. Forget the health. Happier will make you healthy. That's what you got to look for. Don't look for it. Guess, make you lose weight. Make you get weight. Six pack, schmeck pack. Enough with that thing. Looking into your spirit, into your soul. You're going to be happy. You're going to celebrate happiness. That's more important than everything. So the sciatica is the one thing that makes you egomaniac, sad, depressed, problem, and you got to watch it. You got to watch it because as, as it say, just last part because I know you need to go um, after my time. So, so just read that last part, please. The Holy One, blessed be he, saw it all, and there is a hint to Jacob in this verse. And there wrestled a man with him. All the days of the year and with all of Jacob's members, but found no place to hold on to, but the sinew of the vein. Immediately, Jacob's strength diminished. Among the day of the year, he found the ninth of Av when Sam was stronger. And we were sentenced and the temple destroyed. He who eats on the ninth of Av eats as if of the sinew of the vein. Rabbi Chia says, had the strength of Jacob's thigh not weakened, Jacob would have prevailed. And Esau's power would have been broken above and below. So we need to know that that power of negativity, the reason the temple was destroyed two times in the same day, which is connected to nine of up, connected to the sciatica, connecting to all of what we talk about, is because it's a negative time. It's a one day a year that belongs to the dark side. For that reason, you, if you care about how much money you make, it's a one day a year you wanna fast, no matter what happens. Fast, don't drink, don't eat, don't, nothing. So one fast, I always tell people that it has to do with your business. One fast that has to do with money is that time. Tell people, don't work, don't show up for work, don't, don't. Take this fast more serious than anything. Yom Kippur is different because it's elevated you to a highest level spiritually. But Tisha Be'av is taking care of your physicality. And most people don't know it. They take it, ah, just another holiday. No, it's very serious. Very serious. Very serious. The business depends on it because it's a physical world. Yom Kippur, spiritual world. Tisha B'Av, physical world. What are you actually doing with Tisha B'Av? You tell the dark side, I'm giving you nothing. I'm giving you not even a drop. You know what they say in Tisha B'Av, what you cannot do? You cannot even study Torah. You cannot even study spirituality. Why? Because you don't even want to give him that. You give him zero. Zero. The only thing you study is Megillat Echa. It's a morning uh, uh, study, like about morning, the, the Shechina and the Bet HaMikdash. So it's trying to teach us something, guys. Every time you eat the Gidan Hashem, every time you eat the Sayarika, every time you eat this filet mignon famous in every restaurant, the filet mignon is always the most expensive. You go to every restaurant, you're opening the menu, filet mignon, woo, who is that? The rest of the menu is okay, filet mignon, woo. And everybody feel good. It's even sound good. I don't know who invented the name. I have no idea who came up with the name. It sound even good. Yeah, I will have the filet mignon, please. It sound good. It sound rich. Who came up with the name? I have no, who, can somebody educate me? Somebody can educate me. Who came up with the name? What, what does it even mean? What does it even mean? Huh? What about T-bone? What is T-bone? <laughs> the artifact of the I don't know that. You mean, with, what is it? Meat with the bone? Yeah, T-bone is like one half of like, the Like, like what is it called? In, 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 like, yeah, like bone with a steak, regular steak, right? Yeah. No, that, if it's kasher, it's kasher. It's okay. But, <laughs> but the filet mignon, Whatever comes from the back of the animal, the tie of the animal in the back, that contains that uh, energy. Contain that energy. So mignon means cute. Oh, oh, there is a meaning to it in French? Yeah. Oh, what does it mean? So mignon is cute. Like cute? Cute? Yeah. And what is, oh, filet shela cute. Ah, filet chamoud. <laughs> filet chamoud. <laughs> Ivanti, wow, I never, you understand what you say? Mignon means cute. You're very cute because you're small. Because you're small, huh? So I like it. So filet, like, ah, I got it. I like it. Okay, I like it. <laughs> filet mignon. So it's a filet, like filet, filet, like filet, filet. And then mignon is a katan, a chamut kaze, katan. Wow. I never understood. I thought they came up with the, I, I thought it has no meaning, so somebody put a name there. Oh, oh, mignon. I like that. Guys, we have a lot what to teach, but the time is 8, 10, and I went over the time. 
So uh, I don't want to continue, but I don't want to keep you because I saw some of you on the phone. Babysitter issue, boyfriend issue. I don't want to keep you here. So we continue next time, Bezrat Hashem. And I love you. I thank you, all of you, for coming. And we continue next time. Thank you. Thank you very much.